I want to talk to you about God dropping the financial grace on your life. And when that grace comes on you, everything becomes easy for you to obey God concerning your finances, for you to listen to God concerning helping the gospel go forth, and for you to steward money without money stewarding you so that you could hear the spirit and what the spirit is saying about the money rather than what you want to do. When God drops that financial grace on you, it is a mind change. Financial grace goes to the mind. It goes to the mentality. It goes to the soul. It goes to the thought life and it makes you think different concerning money. When financial grace comes on you, you'll understand how your money level is connected to your submission to help somebody else in their issues. That's how you unlock money. You think about it, a preacher preaching the gospel should have the most money in the earth because the gospel is the highest and the only solution to everything. The gospel is the highest and the only solution. So think about it. If you're releasing something that is the solution to everything and money worketh by the solutions that you bring to issues, problems, trouble, turmoil. Think about how much there should be a wealth influx in that direction. Because what solves a problem? The gospel. What delivers one from their troubles, their strongholds, their, their lack, their curses? The gospel. So imagine if someone has dedicated their life to preaching the gospel. They're supposed to be extremely wealthy because this is the highest and the only solution rather that can be made known to man that is effectively eternally long lasting. But not only for the preacher of the word, but the recipients of the preacher. That's why the Bible talk about if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you'll receive the prophet's reward. If you receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man, you'll receive the righteous man's reward. Because all of these aspects have financial grace in it. The righteous man's reward, the prophet's reward has a financial ability from God that comes on you as a result of you receiving the Lord manifesting himself in that righteous man and in that prophet. So I want to say this to you. When financial grace comes on you, that's when you are empowered by God to sow seed. You cannot sow seed just because you know that that is in the word. The power to sow seed is receiving the grace. How do you receive the grace? You pray for it. Did you know that you could receive grace for anything from healing, for gifts of the spirit, for and, and saints, remember, it's called a gift of the spirit, so it's given freely. So what's the grace for the gifts of the spirits? It, it, it is for you to realize how to flow in that gift. So the grace reveals to you how the gift works. But it doesn't utterly like pay for the gift because it's already paid for. That's the power of Jesus' blood. But the grace shows you the pathway for you to walk in it. The same way, seed sowing is not you utterly paying for the blessing of God. The blood has paid for the blessing, but see the grace of the blessing is for a sower to sow. So watch this. In Genesis, God had already gave Adam a garden. God had already made provision for him, but God says, I'm going to give you this earth bearing seed because that was the grace of what God had already gave him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God had already given him heaven on earth, but the grace of that heaven and earth was in the seed. 
So every time he sowed the seed, he was telling God, I agree with your plan to give me heaven on earth. So when you sow in seed, you're coming into agreement with what God has already said, what God has already planned. And you're pushing into manifestation the written plan of God for you as a woman, as a man. Financial grace empowers you to honor God. You don't know how to do it apart from financial grace because the flesh is adversarial to the seed. Your flesh does not agree with sowing. Your flesh agrees with spending. It agrees with saving. It agrees with robbing God. But your flesh is not in agreement to sow. So you have to receive a grace because the grace breaks the law of sin and death, which is in the flesh. When you receive the grace, the grace empowers you to do financially what your flesh would oppose you doing financially. Because the grace is overriding the words, the thoughts, the systems that have pit a veil over you from moving in the kingdom system. So what happens when you receive financial grace? You get set free from the tradition of men that have made the word of God about wealth none effect. The tradition of men that have made the word of God about honoring God none effect. When you receive financial grace, now you receive the power to shatter the chains of religiosity. So the same way religiosity paints a picture that money is evil and the less money you got, the more holy you are, the more righteous, the more pure you are, the more genuine you are. Isn't it funny? Like people think that if nobody talks about money, that they're preaching a genuine gospel. But what good news did Jesus come to bring to me if all you're telling me that he could set my soul free, but I must be hungry. I must suffer forever in my provision. I must always be the borrower and not the lender. How is that good news? Because even the word says that you are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You shall lend and not borrow. All of those come from financial grace. So when the Bible talks about you being the lender, the, the lender is a financial grace. The financial grace of the Holy Ghost is so powerful and massive that when it comes on you, you will become sensitive to time. You will become sensitive to your words. You will become sensitive to your thoughts. You will become sensitive to your expectations. You'll become sensitive to who you allow into the intimacy and the privacy between you and the Lord. Because the financial grace is a wisdom to understand what stops money and what permits money, what blocks finances and what unlocks finances. The financial grace is a wisdom that sits in your soul to begin to rightfully look at what is yours and to follow the protocol to manifest it, obtain it, and enjoy it in this life correctly. And see, the financial grace pits a frustration on you. It makes you realize, how is it that the generations before me did not achieve this? What out of all of their Bible reading and scripture speaking and church going and fastings and prayings, what did they not do? to not live out the blessing of Abraham. Why didn't the blessing of the Lord make them rich and physical? Why was Abram very rich in silver and gold in Genesis 13? Why weren't they very rich? So what happened? Where was the breach? And then the quickening power of the Holy Ghost. He'll alert you that you have to be aggressive about surrendering your finances to him. And you have to do that, not looking for a feeling, not looking for a support of flesh and blood, but realizing that this is your destiny to sow into God. This is your job in the Holy Ghost 
to sponsor kingdom advancement. That every time you sow a seed, there is a harvest that God has now set place as your reward. And it's going to come to you no matter how long you think it's going to be or what, what. Nothing can stop it from getting to you only if you lose your faith in the seed. That's why it says you will reap. Don't be weary in well-doing. Don't be weary in sowing because you will reap. How could you reap without a seed? So the whole matter is you can't lose your faith in the power of God that works through the seed. Because if you don't lose your faith in the power of God that works through the seed, the harvest will surely come. The seed has to never be disrespected by you. Because once you step into sowing, whether it be you sowing the word into your atmosphere or you sowing money into your prophet, your, your man of God, the gospel, all of these seeds, or you sowing your time to hear the word, or you sowing prayer, you sowing fasting, or sowing listening towards the spirit, all of these things have harvests. So you never disrespect the seed and its power and its ability, and the harvest will surely come. Hallelujah. 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 Seed sowing will not leave any man without a harvest. And the power of harvest is that God doesn't give you one harvest. He gives you multiple harvests, but you even got to be so, so wrapped up in the Holy Ghost that the Holy Ghost could show you, hey, this is a harvest. Some people will meet their man of God. Man of God, you know, I'm looking for God to give me a harvest. You meet in the man of God as a harvest. Sometimes people pray, oh, oh, prophet of God, you know, uh, uh, I'm believing God to give me a harvest. And the prophet reading your message and responding to your message is a harvest. So financial grace is the Holy Ghost giving you wisdom of even where harvests are happening in your life where you haven't praised God. If you wake up tomorrow, it's a harvest. If you go throughout all of your day, you didn't get in a car accident, you got all of your limbs, you, you're not in the hospital, you, you're not dead, you're not dying. All of these are harvests. But see, when financial grace is on you, you're a seed sower, you're listening to the spirit. Now, you'll even start detecting how when you honor God, there's so many multitudes of harvests that overtake you in a day. Having a job is a harvest. Having the ability to believe a prophet of God sent to you is a harvest. Having the ability to not get weary is a harvest. You got a harvest of steadfastness moving on your life, a harvest of focus. Mary was moving in a harvest when she sat at Jesus' feet. She didn't listen to Martha because she was moving in her harvest. She received the harvest of being a virtuous woman. See, a harvest affects your character as well. A lot of times you may look for a harvest and say, well, I need the harvest to come. I need some finances to increase here. But see, the increase is happening firstly with your mentality, with your priorities, with your company, how you allow people in your presence, who you let in your presence, the wisdom, the discernment, the discretion. All of these things are harvests that's taking place. When you start realizing what's unnecessary, it's a harvest. And saints, a harvest it comes and upgrades you, spirit, soul, body, and finances. 